today, if you were to go see a dentist um, or a hygienist, one of the things that we're expected to do is we're expected to come up with a classification, a periodontal uh, disease or condition classification based on what we see in your mouth. So we do something called a perio assessment. So when a client comes in, we look at your mouth and we would then decide whether your mouth is healthy, whether your mouth has gingivitis, or does your mouth have periodontitis? Um, does it have any of the other conditions that's affecting the mouth? Or if you have an implant, what type of um, condition is around your implant? Now this will look really confusing to you and, and that's okay. In the next couple of videos, what I will be doing is I'll be breaking these down further and explaining what each and every one of these terms mean. Right now, what I just want you guys to know is that there's four categories. So if you were to come see me right now, um, I would look inside your mouth and I would say, oh, you're either in this category, healthy, or you have gingivitis. You might be in this category where you have periodontitis. You might be in this category where you have other conditions that are affecting the, the mouth. Um, so you could have an abscess. So on top of your health condition or on top of your gingivitis, you could have these conditions and or you could have these conditions. And this is like if you have an implant, you are um, the tissues around the implant could be healthy. The tissues around the implant could be inflamed, but there's no bone loss. The tissues around the implant could have bone uh, bone loss in that area and, and again there could be many other things going around the implant so don't worry too much about these what I do want you to understand is that there are four categories that um, you could have and you don't necessarily have to have only one category you could have periodontitis along with a peri implant disease along with another condition affecting the periodontum so you could have uh, three boxes really checked off for one person, and that is perfectly okay. This is the one that we will uh, focus on uh, shortly, and this is just looking at if you are healthy, you would uh, fall under this category. If you have gingivitis, and again, there'll be another video explaining what gingivitis is, you'll be in this category. And then if you have some conditions in your mouth, some redness in your mouth, that is um, not gingivitis, so it's a different condition. And again, we'll look at that. So for example, let's just uh, hypothetically say, let's say you were brushing your teeth and uh, you used a new toothpaste. And so now you walk out with bright red gums. And the reason why you have bright red gums is not because of plaque. It's because that it's because of the toothpaste that you were using. It's because of you had an allergic reaction to that toothpaste. And so this is considered um, a gingival disease, non-dental biofilament juice. What this word here means, non-dental biofilament, means that the reason why you had this redness is not because of biofilm. It's not because of plaque. It's a non-dental biofilm induced reason. It's because of an allergic reaction to a toothpaste. Here we see another visual explaining those four categories again. So you could be, or you could have a client that falls under this category, periodontal health or gingival diseases. You could have a client that could fall under periodontitis. Again, it's just another visual that we looked at earlier. It's just um, demonstrated to you in a different visual. Now what's really cool about this is that um, this is actually a, a, a recent change. Back in 1999, there was a different type of category. There wasn't four categories. There was actually eight categories. Now we have four categories with many different subsections. So in 1999 and onwards, there was eight categories, which you do not need to worry about. What we want you to know is that now there are four categories that you need to be familiar with. So they have um, condensed it into four categories and they've just had major subsections uh, or yeah, subsections under each category. This is a recent change that the AAP has made. AAP stands for American Academy of Periodontology. They had a huge conference and they decided that one of the changes they will make is having these four categories for ease, um, just to make it easier. And another thing that um, is also really cool is that if you look at the previous categories, it says something like 
tonic periodontitis and aggressive periodontitis well the new categories just combines it all in one so they say that if you have chronic or aggressive and we'll look at what those terms mean later on it's kind of combined in one in fact actually what they really did was they got rid of the aggressive periodontitis so aggressive periodontitis is no longer a thing so this is literally scratched out there's no such thing as aggressive periodontitis now it's just group under periodontitis and then when someone has periodontitis okay, so when someone has periodontitis we stage and grade them and so this sounds confusing but it's actually um it's actually not it's actually a really cool thing that they have come up with because they want to be consistent with the medical field say you know someone with cancer one of the things you might ask is well what type of cancer do you have and what stage are they are they stage one cancer stage two stage three or stage four and so if they're stage four cancer that's really really bad but if they're stage one it's not so bad so that's kind of what we do with this um, if someone has periodontitis we'll stage them is this a, it could be a stage one where it's not so bad it could be a stage two where it's you know moderate it could be a stage three where it's it's, it's um you know, getting to the severe side and then it could be stage four where it's very severe so we stage them we also do grade something called grade a grade b or grade c and again we'll look at that in a, a different video so chronic and aggressive is now clumped into one called periodontitis we stage and grade and another new thing that um they have come up with in the 2017 classification is that they've come up with a peri implant category so this category is now there before if you look at the old ones we don't see anything with the implant word in it now we do see a peri implant category one last thing i want to mention is this one over here so if you have periodontitis again there's three different categories and again we always stage and grade what's interesting about this one that's called periodontitis as a manifestation of systemic disease when you think of systemic disease think of an underlying uh, medical condition that someone would have and in this case i want you to think of someone with diabetes so anytime someone has uh, uh, is diabetic and they're not taking care of their um, diabetes state so they're not taking medications they're not watching their diet and they have periodontitis the category that we would um, classify them as is this category over here so i know this sounds like a mouthful but it's actually just think of this as a person who has periodontitis or bone loss and they have diabetes and their diabetes is unstable 